Are we experiencing the warmest June on record in the UK? Will we see any useful rainfall before the end of the month? And could sunsets and sunrises look a little different over the next few days? All of this we'll try and answer during this week's Met Office Deep Dive. Thank you very much for joining me. My name's Alex Deakin. I'm a meteorologist here at the Met Office. And you are tuned in to our Deep Dive, which is exclusive to our YouTube viewers. So thank you for being there. If you haven't already, please do hit subscribe. And if you like what you see, hit the like button as well. That is really, really helpful for us. Almost got 200,000 subscribers. Be great to smash that barrier in the near future. We love reading your comments as well. Thank you for all of those. Please keep them coming in, whether they're just being nice or whether you actually want some really interesting, different uh, things for us to cover. Uh, we do read them all and we do appreciate them all as well. So please do keep your comments coming in as well. Lots to get through. It is a very, very warm month. We'll touch on the June statistics in just a moment. But first of all, let's look back at the first few days because the weather has changed a fair bit since the weekend when it was very warm and humid. Notice these little U-bends, if you like, in our satellite image over recent days. Another one coming in here. You can see these here, that repeating pattern. They're troughs, what's going on high up in the atmosphere with the jet stream that's driving low pressure systems, mostly up to the north of the UK, but they are starting to get a little closer and a little closer, and that's why we have started to see our weather patterns shifting a little bit in recent times. Let's put the jet stream on, and we can uh, show you what's been happening or what is happening at the moment. We've got another one of these little dips in the jet stream here, another one of these troughs that's pushing this area of low pressure. The low itself is heading up towards Iceland, some wet and windy weather here, but dangling down from it, we have weather fronts, which have, if you live across the northern half of the UK, you'll have noticed, been bringing a lot of cloud and some outbreaks of rain today at time of recording on Tuesday. Further south, still got high pressure, just about trying to hold on, keeping things mostly dry, but it is giving way now. Low pressure will be more of a dominant feature for the next few days. So let's see what happens. See this, this dip in the jet stream, that little trough, that becomes even more defined as we head into Wednesday and into Thursday. And how that interacts with this weather front in particular will be crucial for Thursday's weather across East Anglia and the southeast and whether we see any useful rain. Again, more on that in a moment. That then moves out of the way. By the time we get to the end of this week, into the weekend, the jet is its not as bendy. It's more coming straight across from North America, still driving low pressure systems up towards Iceland. But all the while, for the next few days, the jet stream bringing in weather systems from the Atlantic. Our weather is coming from the Atlantic, which means after what has been a hot June, it will be much fresher for the rest of this week. These are the winds at low levels. So let's pull it back. In the short term, let's take the weather fronts off as well. We don't really need those. Yes, in the short term, we've got a bit of a southwesterly. It's going to be quite warm and humid tonight and on Wednesday. But after that, fast forward to... Um, Thursday, wind's coming in. Let's zoom it around a little bit. Let's zoom in a little bit. Wind's coming in from the Atlantic for Thursday. Friday, wind's coming in from the Atlantic for Friday as well. And Saturday as well, coming in from the, from the northwest now more than anything. So with the winds coming in from the Atlantic, now Aidan, in last week's deep dive, talked a lot about how sea surface temperatures are significantly above average uh, close to the British Isles. But even with the warmer than average seas, when the winds are coming in from the Atlantic, it isn't going to be hot and humid. It's going to be much fresher because the winds have travelled across this broad area of sea. So a, a cooler feel for much of the rest of this week. And I say a cooler feel, temperatures are still going to be pretty much close to average for the time of year uh, towards the back end of this week. But because it has been a very, very warm and humid June, you will notice the difference. The temperatures will be back closer to average for the rest of this week, but only after tomorrow, because actually still tomorrow, there's another warm and humid day to come. Let's take a look at that. If we take a look at the bigger picture again, zooming out a little bit, bringing it back to the here and now. What we've got going on right now, we talked earlier about this low, take the winds off, don't need the winds off, this low heading up towards Iceland and these weather fronts dangling across the UK. These weather fronts not just bringing out breaks of rain, but also this is called a, a warm sector. The gap between the warm front and the cold front. This is a warm sector, and there's really warm and humid air tucked in here. 
And that's what's moving across the UK at the moment. So, yes, the rest of this week will be cooler than much of the month, but it's going to be warm and humid tonight and tomorrow. It won't be until this cold front sweeps the cooler air away as we go through Wednesday and then into Thursday, that front changes, uh, but it sweeps away the warmer air once more, and then we see that fresher air returning for the second half of the week. So it is going to be warm and humid tonight, and then it gets pushed away. Now that weather front will be bringing some outbreaks of rain, some useful rain across parts of the southeast and east Anglia, but it's crucial as to how it interacts with the jet stream. Remember the jet stream's dipping down and driving back up there. The interaction of this weather front with that jet stream will be crucial as to the clearance of the rainfall that that brings. Let's put the rainfall on actually because this is good news. If you're desperate for rain, this is Thursday night Sorry, Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So tomorrow, the rain comes in, sweeps southwards. It fizzles out for a time. But as we go through Wednesday night and into Thursday morning, that rain is expected to pep up. It does depend on the interaction with the jet stream, but it could bring some pretty useful rain across East Anglia and the southeast. Now, there's a question mark about how quickly it moves in and how quickly it clears away, but we are likely to see at least some useful rain across East Anglia and the southeast during Wednesday night and into Thursday morning. So stay tuned to the forecast uh, because, as I say, some question marks about when that will clear away, but some rain is likely, I say, in that southeastern corner, which has been very dry, along with a good other uh, chunk of the UK so far through this month. So that's in the shorter term. What about in the longer term? Let's zoom out and um, have a look at what happens beyond that as that weather front moves away. It will move away at some point during Thursday. And then there's a bit of a bump in the isobars, a bit of a ridge of high pressure, but that's not going to last too long. Again, we're looking out to the Atlantic because as we saw earlier, the jet stream bringing in another low up towards Iceland, and that is likely to bring further cloud and rain across parts of the north as we head through Friday and into Saturday. So a similar kind of setup to what we're seeing at the moment, but the air in here isn't as warm and it's likely to move through a little bit quicker also. But it will bring some further rain, again, mostly across the northern half of the UK during Friday, Friday night and into Saturday. By the time we get to Saturday, that'll be moving out of the way, and then we've got more of a showery picture. So a, a northwesterly with a, a fresher breeze, Saturday, of course, the 1st of July. So a fresher feel for the first day of July with sunshine and scattered showers. So that's the broad outlook, but as I said, temperatures will be key uh, as to the feel of the day over the next few days. Let's take a look at what that means for the temperatures. If we look at uh, Glasgow, for example, we'll see temperatures pretty close to average, maybe dipping a little bit as we head into next week. Manchester will see that peak tomorrow. So we are going to see those temperatures jumping up again tomorrow because that warm and humid air is arriving tonight. Could get to 21 tomorrow, maybe 22 before the temperatures are back closer to average. Norwich there again, seeing that jump in temperatures, 24, maybe even 25 tomorrow before back closer to average. So they're the daytime temperatures that bump tomorrow with the humid air in place and then much closer to average. But let's take a look at the nighttime temperatures because that's quite interesting. Obviously, really warm and humid at the weekend. It is going to be warm and humid tonight as well. Let's take a look at Birmingham. Really warm night tonight. Temperatures likely to stay at 16 or 17 Celsius. Then we get a bit of a dip, but there's another bit of a peak there Friday night as that next weather system comes in again, bringing a bit of warmth and humidity, but only temporarily. The general trend is that it is going to be more comfortable as the fresher air from the Atlantic sticks around. London's interesting because well, 18 may be a bit over the top, 17 probably more likely tonight. But again, tomorrow, because that front hasn't cleared away from the southeast, London and Norwich are likely to have two warm nights before we see more of a dip back closer to average and that fresher air coming in. And that's, that's the Norwich one again, 17, 18 perhaps. Uh, and then it does get cooler as finally that weather front moves away. So that's, broadly speaking, the weather pattern for the next few days and nights. Yes, warm and humid tonight and tomorrow, Tuesday night and Wednesday, but then it turns cooler and fresher with temperatures, just closer to average. Not cold, far from it, just closer to average because the weather will start to come in much more from the Atlantic. So we have seen a shift. Why have we seen a shift? Well, it's all to do with a shift in the jet stream. For most of June, the jet stream has been basically doing this up here, 
taking low pressure systems directly across Iceland or to the north and up towards Scandinavia. And it's allowed a big area of high pressure to be sitting close to the UK pretty much for the entirety of June. Now, sometimes that high has been to the uh, east of us and has allowed southerly winds to generate. And sometimes the high pressure has been further north and allowed an easterly wind, which is how we started the month, of course. But generally speaking, this has been the pattern. What we've seen now, it's not huge. It's fairly typical for this time of year is that we see the jet is that much further south coming down here. So the high pressure has been moved further south, dominating across uh, Iberia. And we are seeing the jet stream bringing low pressure systems closer to the UK, mostly across the north. So we've seen that shift in the jet stream. The high pressure has also, as a result, shifted south, which is why our weather is a little more changeable as we head into the first part of July. Whether that will last or not, well, you have to tune in to the 10-day trend, which I'll be doing tomorrow. Uh, and if you're a tennis lover, of course, start a Wimbledon next week. That might be of interest to you as well. So again, hit subscribe, and then you won't miss that when we put that uh, on this channel uh, tomorrow, probably about three o'clock in the afternoon, the 10-day trend. So that will cover next week's weather in a little bit more detail. What I want to do now is look back at June because it has been a remarkable, remarkable month. So I really want to cover what's happened so far in June and what we can say about the stats already. Even though there are a few days left to go, we are confident this will be the warmest June on record. We are so far uh, above the current record and we know what the temperatures are going to do for the next few days. Yes, it won't be as hot or as humid, but even with temperatures close to average, because it has been so warm, we can confidently say that this June is going to be the warmest June on record. Let's take a look at some of the stats and some of the maps. This is the map for the maximum, the average maximum temperature so far up to and including the 25th of the month. And you can see a uh, bit of an east-west split a little bit, but even in the east where temperatures haven't been as high because we started with an easterly breeze on the east coast, remember? So the first eight, nine days were quite chilly on the east coast. But even here, temperatures are above average by between one and a half and two and a half degrees. And in the west, the maximum temperatures are over three and a half degrees above average. And as the UK as a whole, we're running close to four degrees above average in terms of the maximum temperatures. The mean temperatures is over two degrees above average. The minimum temperatures are above uh, or one degree above the long term average. So this is a really remarkable uh, map showing how much warmer it has been compared to average. This is the mean temperature graph plotted as a daily average. So you can't quite see the dates along the bottom there because they're covered up by that black bar. Apologies for that. But this is the first of June. Well, oh, going up to the 25th of June here and current time. Now, the red, sorry, the blue line plotted here plots each day's the average mean temperature across the UK. And you can see there that we started a little below the average. The black line is the average line. This is the average line here. And we started a little bit below, actually. So on the 2nd of, I knew it was going to do that. The 2nd of uh, June, so that's taking the average of the 1st and the 2nd, amalgamating them together. Then you add on the average of the 3rd and you plot all the way up. So it's a, it's a cumulative average um, up to the current time, latest data from the 25th. And you can see how for the first yeah, eight, nine days, we were close to the average because the east was cooler than average, the west was warmer than average. Then we lost those easterly winds and we started to draw in warmth and humidity from the south and temperatures have been rising ever since. So we've been building up and we are now significantly above the highest on record. Temperatures are remarkably high. The average so far for the mean temperature is 16 degrees. The previous record, which is set in 1940, is 14.9 Celsius. So we are over a degree above that record uh, temperature and we are going to break it because we know that the temperatures over the next few days, although it won't be as hot as it has been, temperatures are not going to be in the high 20s, low 30s, they're going to be closer to average, but they're still not going to bring that down low enough for it not to be the warmest June on record. So that's pretty remarkable uh, stat for June. Another interesting stat once uh, this month has been taken into, once 2023 has been taken into account, something like five of the top 10 warmest Junes have all been this century. But an even more remarkable stat is if you take the year, each calendar month, 
Um, eight of the 12 calendar months will have broken their average maximum temperature record within the past 17 years. So we've broken February, March, April, May, this will be June, July, uh, October and no, uh, sorry, November and December. Eight of the 12 calendar months will have broken their average maximum UK record since 2006. Uh, and again, records, all of these records, all these temperature stats going back to 1884. So in the past almost 140 years, it's within the last 20 years that eight of the 12 calendar months have broken their maximum average temperature. So there's a clear sign there. We know that climate change is driving temperatures. It, Yes, we've had warm spells in the past, but climate change means that these warms have all, been, have all been shifted. The extremes are happening more frequently and we are more frequently breaking temperature records, all points to climate change. So yes, a pretty warm month, pretty remarkable month in terms of uh, temperature. Some other interesting facts to bring out about June. Now, these are early provisional stats and of course there are still a few days left to go. We are very confident on the temperatures because we know what's going to happen with those. But in terms of rainfall, yes, it has been quite a dry month. Now this uh, is the, the rainfall amount so far that we've seen compared to the entire month's average. So you would expect it to be a little drier than average at this stage because there's still four or five days worth of data to go into this map. So this is compared to the whole month. We are based up to the 25th. Um, but you can see here the darker browns, what I just want to highlight here is the darker browns across East Anglia, South Wales and South West England. They're the areas that have been particularly dry. But I also want to highlight this area of white across the Midlands into northwestern parts of England. The white areas which are much closer to average and some, even, even a few dollops of, of blue in there as well, which means we've already seen more than the average rainfall. So yes, it has been a dry month, but some areas have already seen their monthly average. And I want to show you this because it ties in quite nicely with this graph, which shows where we've seen the most thunderstorms, the most lightning activity so far through this month. And you can see there's purple blotches there tying in quite nicely with the, that area that has seen around average rainfall across the Midlands and up into northwest England there. So it's those thunderstorms that we've seen dropping a lot of rain in a short space of time that have built up those areas in the Midlands up to northwest England, meaning they have seen around average rainfall, but the rest of the country around those areas have been uh, really quite dry. And that's what this graph shows. Again, this is building up the cumulative uh, through the month. Uh, there's the average line there, the black line, so we're well below that, hence why the brown shading. But what I really want to highlight here is the start of the month, those first few days up to the 8th, 9th, Hardly any rain falling at all. And again, with that easterly breeze, high pressure and control, lots of sites didn't record a drop of rain for uh, the first week of June. Then we saw that shift in the wind patterns, more humid air coming up from the south. Temperatures have been higher generally, but also that more humid air has sparked a fair few thunderstorms. So the rainfall averaged over the country has been ticking up and we are now a long way from the driest on record which is the blue line at the bottom we're much much close to average still going to be a drier than average month in all probability but there are still four or five days left yet to go and another thing about june it's been a sunny month a very sunny month um, again still four or five days to go to put into this data but this map already is yellow now there's still a few days to go, but uh, if it was white, it would be close to average. There are some pockets of white, the north coast of uh, Norfolk there, parts of Fife, and down across the border between uh, England and Wales in the southeast corner there. But most of that map is yellow, suggesting we've already had at least 110% of the uh, sunshine. And parts of the highlands there of Scotland, over 170% of their average June sunshine. As a whole, the UK running 137%. Uh, we know it's going to be the sunniest uh, June since 1975, likely to be in the top five sunniest Junes on record uh, and could even be in the top three. So it has been a very sunny June as well as a quite dry one, but a remarkably warm one. Uh, and as I say, still a few days to go. All of these stats will be compiled. There is more information about the, the temperatures in particular in a Met Office press release, so go and search uh, for that um, online. 
but all of these stats will be finalized and looked at in more detail. These are early provisional stats, but they'll be finalized and looked at, and there'll be more on that once the end of the month has arrived. Probably next Monday, I think there'll be a, a full-on press release about the full on June stats, if you want more about that. Okay, one more thing to talk about this week. You may have seen we posted this yesterday on social media. It's a satellite image showing quite a lot of clouds streaming in from the Atlantic, the current system that we're seeing right now. But also down here, you notice just off the coast of Portugal, this kind of oily, greeny, bluey color. That's actually smoke from Canadian wildfires that's drifted across the Atlantic and that's been spreading its way in. And actually, the projections for the smoke particles suggesting it could get a lot closer to the UK. Uh, these, uh, this is the forecast for Wednesday uh, based on the data from Copernicus and the European computer model projecting the wind. So, yeah, we are likely to see some of that. It's high up in the atmosphere, not really affecting uh, air pollution or air quality down on the ground. It is quite high up in the atmosphere, but that, that wildfire smoke may well be present in the atmosphere up close to the UK. Why is that interesting? Well, it could help make sunsets and sunrises a little bit more atmospheric. Interestingly, uh, I read something recently that smoke particles don't necessarily make sunsets, sunrises more colorful because of the size of the particles. They don't scatter the light as much, but they just add a bit of atmosphere. As we saw, uh, when was it, 2017, when um, ex-hurricane Ophelia went up towards the UK and drew up some wildfire smoke from Portugal, I believe it was, and made the sun rise, particularly around here, really quite atmospheric. So there may be some more atmospheric sunsets, sunrises, but of course that is being drawn up at the same time as that weather front is likely to be bringing cloud and outbreaks of rain. So it might not make for a particularly spectacular view, but you never know, you might get lucky if that front clears away or if you catch a good glimpse of it maybe before the rain arrives. But just something I thought of note of interest. Uh, that's probably about it from me for today. As I said, tune into the 10 day trend tomorrow for more about next week's weather. Keep an eye out for Met Office press releases about the heat in June. And uh, do, do keep your comments coming in. Please hit like if you've enjoyed this. Hit subscribe as well and share it with your friends. Get us up to the uh, magic 200,000K followers uh, pretty soon. That would be brilliant. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching and we'll do it again next week.